I want to just run through negative gene regulation and positive gene regulation in prokaryotes. So negative gene regulation happens anytime that um, you've got a repressor. So here's the repressor, whether it's a repressible operon or here's the repressor if it's an inducible operon. Either way, a repressor is present. Um, if you've got a repressor, we're going to call it negative gene regulation. So for the two types of negative gene regulation, there are repressible operons and there are inducible operons. With a repressible operon, um, the example that we used was tryptophan synthesis. With this kind of operon, the operon is usually on, meaning the repressor is made in an inactive form uh, all by itself. And then you have the product of this whole anabolic um, cascade, and that's what goes ahead and um, activates this repressor. So now that you have an active repressor, it can go into the operator um, position and keep the RNA polymerase from transcribing the genes. So in that case, um, tryptophan acts as a co-repressor, and it activates the repressor. And this is usually anabolic, where you build or synthesize molecules, like in this case, um, tryptophan. So the end product of an anabolic pathway becomes a co-repressor and stops the whole production um, of the tryptophan in the first place. Indu inducible operons also have a repressor. It's just that the repressor is usually active. So the operon is usually off because this repressor is active. It's typically bonded right here to the operator. Now, if you have allolactose present, allolactose acts as an inducer, not as a co-repressor. So this inducer is a small molecule, in this case, the molecule that it, the enzymes are going to break down, lactose. So it's a small molecule that inactivates the repressor. So the repressor is usually active. The inducer bonds to it and makes the repressor inactive. Um, and then that would just pull the, I've lost my cursor, sorry, pulls the repressor off um, because the repressor is now inactive. So this is usually catabolic processes. Catabolic means you break something down. So in this case, the substrate, lactose or allolactose, is um, what the catabolic uh, pathway would start with, and then it would break it down into its um, subunits. So that's negative gene regulation in both cases, whether you're turning it on or turning it off. Um, in both cases, you've got a repressor. And in both cases, if the repressor is bonded to the operator, then the whole operon is turned off. Then we have positive gene control as opposed to negative gene control. So negative gene control would be both the LAC operon and the TRIP opteron. In both cases, we have a repressor molecule. When the repressor is active, it bonds to the operator and just stops transcription. So this is really an on-off switch. If the repressor is bond, uh, has bonded to the operator, then it's off. And if the repressor has not bonded, then it's on. Positive gene regulation is more really of a volume control. So Let's say the repressor has come off and transcription can happen. What you would typically see is a very low level of transcription. But if you have, um, if you need to have more lactose, um, for lactose broken down, for example, if you need to have more lactase, you might want to turn the volume up. So let's say that lactose is present. That is a really bad lactose. Sorry, if lactose is present, but um, there's no other food source, or at least not glucose around. So if glucose is not around, then cyclic AMP is going to bind to CAP, making CAP active. And when CAP is active, it bonds to the promoter, helps RNA polymerase to bind. And then you have transcription at a very high rate, making a whole lot of lactase, which will break down a whole lot of lactose. So again, positive gene control stimulates gene expression. It turns the volume up. If glucose is around, then CAP is not going to be helping. RNA polymerase can still bind to the promoter, but it just won't bind at a very high rate. Its affinity is much lower, meaning it doesn't latch on quite as well.